Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our God in heaven, we thank you for this worship service. Thank you, Lord, because of the strength you give us in the inner man. And thank you, Lord, because of the call you give unto us. And you raise up a standard before us, the standard of life, the standard of holiness and righteousness, and the standard of the teaching of your word that you hold before us every time. And you grant us the grace and the inner strength to be able to do and to be able to accomplish what you have called us to do and to accomplish. We're asking, O oh Lord, at this time again, as you reveal to us your mind and your way, that your word will be precious to every one of us in Jesus' name, that none of us will count your word as a strange thing. Thing. But the word will be something that we delight in, we rejoice in, we accept totally, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, so that, Lord, we will be doers of the word in Jesus' name. Grant us, Lord, understanding in the word, and the heart to be obedient to the word, that we will be an inspiration as well as a great good influence on the lives of other people. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give me another amen. amen. God bless you. As we come to the word of God today, if you are not very familiar with the word of God, or if you are being blindfolded by the spirit of the age, when the word of God comes, you are like to have, to have an attitude that the children of Israel had many, many years before this time. These were the people of God that the Lord had called. And the Lord had made it very clear, very plain to them, the standards of heaven and the requirements of the word of God. In fact, this area of the word had been revealed to them from the very beginning and from the very foundation of that nation, a holy nation of peculiar people. And then eventually prophets came, leaders came, preachers came, and revealed the same thing unto them, and broadened it, and deepened it, and explained it very well to them. But the children of Israel came to the point in their lives that those things became strange in their ears. And then we come to the New Testament, and when the word of God came to the people, unfortunately, some of them said, we have seen strange things today. We have heard strange things today. Because they did not allow the Lord himself, the God of heaven and earth, the Lord himself, the creator and the redeemer, the Lord himself, our perfect example, and the great teacher as well as savior, to reveal his very mind unto them. Look at Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. The Lord spoke to the children of Israel. He raised up leaders, preachers, prophets for them. And he revealed to them his very mind, his desires, his heart. He revealed to them the standard of his word. Unfortunately, they were so far removed from the way of the Lord that they counted those things as strange things. Proverbs chapter 22. In Proverbs chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 20. 
Have not I reached to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge? Here the Lord was asking the children of Israel, What I gave you, what I wrote to you, what I spoke to you from the prophets and the leaders I restored. Have not I reached unto thee excellent things in counsels and in knowledge that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth? that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that sent unto thee. The Lord was telling the children of Israel, the things I wrote to you, and the things I said to you, and the things I revealed to you, I revealed excellent words, and the words of truth. And it's so that you will take it in your life. Not only that, you'll pass it on to the coming generation, the people that come to ask from you what you have learned and what the Lord requires. And it's one of those things we're looking at today. One of the deep revelations of God that you do not hear in many places, you do not read in many books, and you do not have from many preachers. I'm talking to you today on the heavenly-minded Christian in this present evil world. To, hear, to even think that the present world in which we live is an evil world, is a dirty world, is a defiled world. To even think or to even suggest to the average man on the street that this present world is evil, is strange to their ears. And then you know that the Christian is in the world, but is not of the world. And that is to be totally different, distinct, distinguished, separate from the people of the world. For them, it's a strange thing. And yet, this is the excellent word. This is the word the Lord himself has revealed. That the Christian, though in the world, will not live, will not act, will not behave, will not appear, will not dress, will not do anything like the people of the world. He is to be heavenly minded the heavenly minded christian in this present evil world in galatians chapter one i'm reading to you from verses three and four galatians chapter one verse three and verse four grace be to you and peace from god the father and from our lord jesus christ who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God our Father. Those two verses talking about the grace of God and the peace of God coming from the Father and coming from the Son and coming down unto us, changing us transforming us, renewing us, making us different from the world around us. And he said, Christ gave himself for our sins and for the purpose that he might deliver us from this present evil world. That is, he rescues us. It's looking at the world like a dirty well. And everybody sucking in the dirty, poisonous water in the well. And then here comes a hand from heaven. And it's because of the grace of God. And because of the love of God, he reaches down into that dirty well of the world. And he rescues us. And he lifts us up. And he separates us. 
and he removes us from that dirty water in the world. He gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. What's the will of God? That we be saved. What's the will of God? That we'll be rescued, pulled out of the dirty well, poisonous water in the well of the evil world. And that's why you need to understand, when you come to Christ, when you are born again, the Lord changes you, turns your mind, turns your heart, transforms you, converts you. And then you begin to see the world in its real right perspective, that it's dirty, it's evil, it's deadly. And if you are saved, if you are born again, you are delivered out of that evil world. In James chapter 1, verse 27. James 1, verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted, undefiled, unstained from the world. It's still telling us that the nearer you get to the world, the more unqualified you are for heaven. Because when you come to the Lord, for you to be able to get to heaven, he calls you out of the dirty world, out of the evil world. And then he says, you must, not have the, you must now have the grace of God in your life, so that you are kept by the power of the Lord from the dirty, evil world. And your mind, and your heart, and your desires, and your aspirations, and your ambitions, your affections, and not for the things of the world anymore. You become heavenly minded. In Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. It says, you are saved. The evidence of that. You are, be, you are dead with Christ. You are buried with Christ. And you rise with Christ. And because you have risen with Christ, your attention now, your affection now, your ambition now, your desires, your aspirations now, shall be set on things above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. How do you know whether you are heavenly minded or earthly minded? Where your heart is. That's where your treasure will be. What interests you? What attracts you? What delights you? What makes you happy? What makes you joyful? Are there things above or things on the earth? Are there things mundane or things spiritual? Are there things carnal or things related to Christ-like living? If you are risen with Christ, you're seeking those things above, not things on the earth, where Christ is seated. And you set your affection, you set your mind, you set your love, you set your, the direction of your life on things above, not on things here below on the earth. Because after all, you are dead with Christ. And your life is seed now with Christ in God. And the things that interest God, the things that God approves of, 
the things that glorifies God, honors God, those are the things on which your heart is now set. A true Bible Christian is a converted man, a converted woman, a transformed person. Living on earth, he is heavenly minded. The world is evil through and through. And what let people are evil and sinful in their heart and their lifestyle. But Christians are the children of God with Christ living within. We are heavenly minded. We are kept by the power of God from the pollutions of this present evil world. When you talk about the true Christian, there are three things that mark out a true Christian. Number one is called out of the world. Number two is cleansed by the blood of Christ. Number three is controlled by the Spirit of God. You're talking about a real believer. You're talking about a true believer. Number one is called out of the world. It tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out. Who has called you out. Who has called you out, out of darkness into his marvelous light. The number one thing that characterizes a real Christian, a true Christian, a Bible-believing Christian, a Christian that's on his way to heaven, that first thing is called out of the darkness in the world. Number two is cleansed by the blood of Christ. We're told in 1 John chapter 1 verse 7, 1 John, Chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us, washes us, purges us purifies us from all sin, no sin remaining. What then is the second thing that characterizes a real child of God, a true child of God, a Bible-believing child of God, is cleansed by the blood of Christ. Number three, is controlled by the Spirit of God. Called out of the world. Cleansed by the blood of Christ and then controlled by the Spirit of God. In Romans chapter 8 verse 14, Romans chapter 8 verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as are led, directed, controlled, Taught, influenced by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. How do you know a child of God? How do you know a real Christian? A person is not controlled by the flesh, but controlled by the Spirit. A person is not controlled by the world, but controlled by the Lord. A person who is not controlled by his simple tendencies, but controlled by the scripture. A person who is not controlled by the spirit of the age, or the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, but a person that is controlled by the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God, for as many as are led, directed, influenced, taught, controlled, by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
those are the three things we're looking at as we divide the message to three parts. Number one, called out of the world to please God. Called out of the world to please God. Number two, cleansed from worldliness to promote godliness. Cleansed from worldliness to promote godliness. Number three, controlled by the Lord to propagate his glory. Controlled by the Lord to propagate his glory. I come to number one, called out of the world to please God. The real Christian who has repented of sin and he has received Christ the Savior, that Christ is now his Savior and his Lord. He is the person that is the called out man, the called out woman, the called out boy or girl. Actually, the word church means called out. And when you become a Christian, what does the Almighty God do? The Lord added to the church. Those that are saved, the church, the assembly of called out people. And when you are part of that assembly, not the worldly church, not the nominal church, not the traditional church, not the tribal church, not the denominational church, the church of the firstborn, the church of Jesus Christ, the church of God himself. It's the called out people, the assembly, the fellowship, the group, the congregation of called out people. And so that makes the Christian a called out man and a called out woman. In fact, Jesus Christ said, talking about those false believers that came to him in John chapter 17. John chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. You gave them to me out of the world. If you are not yet out of the evil world, out of the evil system, you are not Christ's yet. You do not belong to Christ yet. It is when you come out of all the evil system of the world, and you come out of all the evil practices of the world, then you come to Christ. Because the Lord said, you gave them to me out of the world, thine the world. And thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. These are the people that know the Lord. And these are the people that keep the word of the Lord. There is an inner strength. And there is the grace of God in that person's life. He is able to obey. He is able to keep the word of the Lord. Look at verse 14. I have given them thy word. And the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. You understand what that is saying? If you are a Christian, you are Christ's one, a Christ man, a Christ woman, a Christ boy, a Christ girl. And a Christ man, Christ woman, Christ boy, Christ girl will be as Christ will live as Christ and will not do what Christ will not do, will not partake of anything in the world that Christ will not partake of. I have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. What does that mean? I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of their schools. Let them keep on going to school, but it will be different when they get there. They are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. 
I pray not that you'll take them out of the city. They'll still live in the city, but they'll be different from the people in the city. I'm not praying that you'll take them out of the police force so that no Christian will be a policeman. Let them remain in the police force, but they'll be different from the policemen of the world. I'm not praying you'll take them from the army. Let them remain in the army, but they'll be different from the soldiers of the world. I'm not praying that you'll take them out of the market. Let them remain in the market, but they'll be different from the people in the market. I'm not praying that you'll take them out of the village. Let them remain in the village, but they'll be different from the people in the village. That's what the Lord is saying. Don't take them out of the physical world. Yes, keep on living in your street. Keep on living in your community. But you are the light of the world. You are different. You are the salt of the earth. You are different. In verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. It tells us once again that if we're Christians, we're different from the people of the world. In John chapter 15, verse 19. John chapter 15, verse 19. If ye were of the world, the world will love its own. If the world actually loves you, then you don't belong to Christ. You belong to the world. Your language, your family lifestyle, your festivities, your celebrations, the places you go, the things you drink, and the things you put in your mouth, everything, if the world loves you, then you belong to the world. You are not out of the world yet. Don't tell me you are born again if you are still chewing what you were chewing before, the hard drugs. And if you're still stimulating yourself with those hard drugs, and if you're still taking your cigarette and marijuana, don't tell me you are born again. When you are born again, there is a mighty difference in your life. The things you used to do, you do them no more. And the places you used to go, you go there no more. If the world is still appreciating you, and the world is still loving you, and the world is still embracing you, then you are not of God, you are of the world. In that verse 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. The very fact that the world is frowning at us, that's the evidence that we belong to the Lord. And the very fact that, you know, the worldly people will not want to come to our church and they say, I prefer that other church downtown. I prefer that other church on the mountain. I prefer that other church in the valley. I prefer that other church on the corner of the street. But that one they call deeper life. No, we hate that one. That gives us a, a mark that we actually belong to the Lord. They hate us. Because they will not accept. They want to keep on smoking their cigarettes. And they want to keep on taking their hard drugs. And they want to keep on embezzling money. They want to keep on in their fraud. They want to keep on in their worldliness. Because of that, they will not accept where we stand. And that is actually a past mark for us. Because it shows us if the world is rejecting us, then we belong to the Lord. If the world is accepting you, then you belong to the world. Then it tells us in Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. Their festivities. Their idolatrous ceremonies. And their groups or their gang or their societies, secret societies, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. What a revelation, what a commandment the Lord is giving us there. In Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 3. Your child of God, here is what the Lord is saying. That we come out of all those things in the world. They must not be in our lives. In uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. But fornication 
and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints between boys and girls, between young men and young women, between married men and married women. It says, let not adultery, fornication, uncleanness, covetousness be once named among you as it befeeds saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye you know, that no unmonger, adulterer, that is it, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, a covetous man, is an idol worshiper, is worshiping money. Is worshiping material things. And he can give up anything. He, he can give up the Bible because of gold and silver, because of money, because of material things. And he can abandon the worship of God because of material things. Is worshiping those material things. That's an idol worshiper. That's why the Bible says the covetous man is an idol worshiper, an idolater. They don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not therefore partakers of them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Be different. That's the mark, that's the evidence you belong to the Lord. Be different. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful words of darkness, but rather reprove them. What do you think of the people that finish church on Sunday like this? And then immediately after the church service, they go to a kind of village meeting. Catholics are there. Traditional worshippers are there. And the regular old uh, historic churches are there. Traditional churches are there. And they say we come from the same village. And then they will be drinking their palm wine, but I will not drink, but you are part of them. And they will be saying all that they are saying, but you are part of them. And all they are out in, and all the evil they are against the, other, against the other village, and against the other community, against the other clan. They are planning against them, but you are there. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Look at verse 14. The command, the command of the Lord, the challenge of the Lord. Wherefore, he says, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. And Christ shall give thee light. And Christ shall give thee light. You see, when you come to the Lord, you come out of the things of the world. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm reading to you from verse 14. Acts chapter 2 verse 14. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this Unto what generation? It's a generation that is not thinking right. It's a generation that is not acting right. It's a generation that is not living right. It's a generation that is not behaving right. It's a generation whose heart is not turned towards God, it's turned towards evil. Save yourselves from this unto what generation? Perverse generation. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued. That's a secret, that you have become born again, and then you come out of the world to save yourself from this untoward generation. And now, after believing in the Lord, you 
continue, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. As we talk about uh, these people that are called out, called out of the world, so they can live a life pleasing to the Lord. What do they come out of? Number one, they come out of the abominations of the world. They come out of the abominations of the world. Number two, they come out of the affections of the world. Affections of the world. Number three, they come out of the ambitions of the world. Coming out of the ambitions of the world. They are the worldly people, they have their own ambitions. And it's a different kind of ambition. And the Lord is saying, come out of the ambitions of the world. Number four, they come out of the associations of the world. You won't be in those associations if you really belong to the Lord. How, what can we tell if somebody says, I'm a worker in the church, and he still belongs to those associations? Come out from there. Because if you are really going to get to heaven and you are going to walk on this path that leads to life eternal, you come out of the associations of the world. Number five, come out of the agitations of the world. The agitations of the world. You know the worldly people, you know they get what they want to get from the government. You know, they twist the hand and twist the leg and twist the neck of the leadership so they can get what they want. Come out of the agitations of the world. Number six, come out of the amusements of the world. The music, the entertainment, their reception after marriage, the way they do their burial. As if they are going to spend all the income of their total life because of barrier, come out of the amusements of the world. Number seven, come out of the apparel, appearance, adornment of the world. Come out of the apparel, the clothing, the appearance, and the adornment of the world. Look at it one by one. Come out of the abominations of the world in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm reading to you there from verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 18, reading from verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God givest thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Anywhere you go, you might travel out of your country here and get to a West African country. They have their abominations. Or get to a Central African country, they have their abominations. Or you might go to the West America or Britain or France or wherever, they have their own abominations. You, when you get to the land, remember, you are a Christian. First of all, you are a Christian before you even think you are a Nigerian. Or before you think you're an African, or before you think you're a Westerner, you are a Christian. And if there is any abomination in any country, in any land, the Lord is saying, as a mark that you belong to the Lord, you will not partake of the abominations of that land. Every profession has its abomination. And if you're a policeman, there are abominations in the police force. And if you are a market woman, there are abominations in the marketplace. If you are in the office, if you are a civil servant, there are some abominable things that are done. If you are in school, there are some abominations in those communities, in those schools. If you are a teacher in the teaching professions, there are abominations that are carried out. As a Christian, you are different, you are distinct, and you are distinguished as a child of God. You come out of the abominations in that profession. You know what the people do. You're a medical doctor or you're a nurse. There are abominations associated with everything that they practice, with some of the things they practice there. Although you still remain a doctor, although you still remain a nurse, you will not partake in the abominations of that profession. We are Christians and we have to be different from the people of the land. And the Lord is saying here, when thou art come, into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not learn. How do you do this thing? How do you practice this thing? How do you people have this and that? You will not even learn it. And you will not have their catalog. 
and you will not have all the things they are learning to do those evil things thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations there, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that use a divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. You will not be, there shall not be a witch, a necromancer, a person that is consulting the dead among the people of God, a person that is reading the palms of people. Let me look at your palm and let me tell you your future, your destiny, as I look at your palm. It is abomination and it says there will be nobody among the people of God that will have any kind of abomination like that or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirit or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things and abomination unto the Lord and because of these abominations the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee you will not partake in the abominations of the world number two the affections of the world the affections of the world and you know that the world is totally taken up with what they call love Valentine affection and everything is lost and you see today that everything is taken up with all that kind of loss, all that kind of evil thing. And there's nothing they want to advertise today. Uh, they did not put almost in a, a semi-naked woman. If they want to advertise, whatever it is, even ordinary, if you're advertising pencil, you're advertising biro, they'll put a woman by the biro. As if the women are the most intelligent to know right to a biro. If they're advertising fan, they put a woman there. Advertising air condition, they put a woman there. Advertise anything. Everything is connected with the affection and the loss and the love of the world. But the Lord is saying, come out of the affections of the world. In Galatians chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 24. Galatians chapter 5. Reading from verse 24, Galatians 5, verse 24, And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with their affections and their lusts. They have crucified the flesh and their affections. Then you come out of the ambitions of the world. You know there are many ambitions, ambitions of the world. And there are people that have that kind of ambition, and they will do anything and everything to get there. But you know, you might uh, get there and still lose your soul. Like Absalom, you know what he wanted? He had an ambition, the ambition of Absalom. I'll be there. Even if he had to kill his father, I'll be there. Even if he has to drive away his father from the throne, I'll be there. You know, when you become so drunk for success, and you become so drunk with prosperity. And you become so drunk with position. And you become so drunk with power. I must be there. Even if I kill David, my father. Even if I run David out of town. Even if I even take all the people and then begin to take bad advice. Because of ambition. Aethophel said, you know... If you go into those women associated with your father in the presence of all Israel, then the people will know that your father has hated you because of what you have done, and then your mind will be strong, their mind will be strong, and that young man he said, just give me any advice. Anything that will make me to realize my goal, my dream, my ambition, I will do it, even if it is immorality, even if it is abomination, I will do it. You know, there are people like that, they have such great ambition that they want to lose their soul in getting into that ambition. They want to become a chief in the local village. And uh, sometimes you read uh, that somebody has, be has been a professor at university, and now he wants to become a traditional chief. And he leaves the ivory tower of education, and he goes into idol worship, and they put all these beads on him, and he says, I am not professor anymore of whatever field. I am now a chief. What kind of thing is this? The ambition of the world. And the Lord is saying, come out of the ambition of the world. In Genesis chapter 11, I'm reading to you there from verse 4. Genesis chapter 11, verse 4. And he said, go to. Let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. 
and let us make us a name. That is it. Let us make us a name. When you come to the church here, you're not coming to make a name here. You want to get to heaven, that's why you came to this church. But when any group of people in the church, maybe your choir, and then in the, your little group in the choir there, let us make us a name, and we will do anything to get the attention of everybody. Or you are a group of young people there, let us make us a name. It's an ambition. And it's the ambition of the world. And the Lord is saying that kind of ambition is destructive. It will not allow you to get to heaven. Let us come out of the ambition of the world. They said, let us make us a name. Let we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Upon the face of the other. We don't want to be scattered. We want to remain where we are. The people that built the Tower of Babel is that we are here, we are here, we are here forever. I will build this tower reaching up to heaven. I will, will not spread in all the earth where the Lord is sending us. We will not have that attitude. The Lord will deliver us from the ambitions of the world in Jesus' name. I need a great amen. amen. Number four, from the associations of the world. Associations of the world. You know that today in primary school, those young people, they will come together. Some of them, it is, there's now cults in a primary school, and they will pinch themselves or cut themselves with blade and put their blood in a cup and, 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 they, and they mix it with water, and then they'll drink. We are now in association together. You go to secondary school, the same thing today, association, association. You go to university, there is association. And now when you come to those who are selling, you come to the adult world, the people who are barbers, there's association. Those who are trading, there's association. There are those who are selling spare parts, there's association. Those who are pull, pushing truck, carrying loads, those who help you, you come out from the bus, you want to go to another bus stop, and they're carrying your load, they have association. And the people that are not even doing anything, they're not doing anything, they're only stopping the vehicle, how much money did you get? Bring uh, your contribution. All those people, they have association. Everybody has association today. But if you're a Christian, your citizenship is in heaven. I said your citizenship is in heaven. And you are not in any association that will pull you down. When Christ will come, you break all the cord and you break all the string. Anything tying you to any association here in the world will not allow you to go in the rapture, but I'm going in the rapture. I said I'm going in the rapture. I will not be tied down. You will not read my name in any society, any secret cause. I will not belong to any association. I am for Christ. I said I am for Christ. I said I am for Christ. I belong to any association. We have cut off from those associations, and we are the people going to heaven. We're strangers on this earth, and we're pilgrims on this earth. Our home is in heaven in Jesus' name. In James chapter 4, James chapter 4, I am reading to you from verse 4. James chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If you belong to those associations, come out. Otherwise, God will count you as an enemy. Number five, the agitations of the world. The agitations of the world. The agitations of the world. Uh, do you know what is happening in the world today? Agitation. Agitation. You know what that means? If uh, the people of the world, they want to get anything, what do they do? They begin to agitate. They begin to trouble everybody. And nobody will have peace until they have that thing. And if, uh, you know, they come out, if the police try to calm them down, and then they will fight with the police. And uh, if uh, the police hurt any of them, mistakenly or even deliberately, why try to calm them down? They will go inside, they'll go and regroup again, and they'll go and refortify themselves again. They'll come out the second day. Even if somebody dies in their agitation, they don't care, they don't mind. Even if they die and lose their souls and get to hell, they don't care. They come out again for agitation. They say, we'll fight it through. 
and then sometimes the police will you know throw tear gas and shoot and randomly and everything after they run like this 10 minutes after you think that they have listened they come out again and they begin to chant their song agitation and then when you come to the church and the people that have been agitations in the world and now you come to the church and then you want something from the pastor you want something from the church and instead of going the humble way and going the loving way and going the scriptural way and going the christian way you don't come the christian way it's agitation by making noise by knocking something by pulling down something by removing something from whatever and then as the agitation comes somebody will shout there someone will shout there agitation thank god i'm not part of them you 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 praise the lord i will not be part of them in jesus name and look at first peter first peter reading from chapter four first peter chapter four reading from verse three for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the gentiles when we watch in lasciviousness and loss and excess of wine and rebellious and banquetings and abominable idolatry wherein they think it strange that she run not with them to the same excess of riot we're not rioters anymore speaking evil of you because we're not part of them anymore that's why they speak evil of us number six the amusements of the world it's called rebelling in Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. Galatians chapter 5, we're looking at verse 21. That we're no more involved with the amusements of the world, the music of the world. Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 21. And means murders, drunkenness, revelings. Those are the amusements of the world and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are part of the uh, people having the amusements of the people of the world, the entertainment of the world, then you will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's surprising today, as we see some people when they are getting married, the kind of music that you hear there. And the kind of uh, merriment they have there, and the kind of uh, they, they are distributing plays, and they put their picture, and they put their names, and then they, they put some other things. And if they have one useless certificate of primary six, they say, you know, they, they even write their curriculum vitae now on the plate, on the something, you know, so and so. The picture is there, the name is there, uh, primary school, uh, school certificate, uh, 1982. And uh, secondary school, the secondary school, uh, this one is that, uh, you know, C and D all through. And then it says uh, 19 something. And this one and this one, which one is that? The amusement of the world, the entertainment of the world, and the revelings of the world, all those things, we're going to pack them away. We will not have anything to do with them anymore. Things are different now. We're children of God. The amusement of the world will go in Jesus' name. And then the apparel of the world, and the appearance of the world, and the adornment of the world in Zephaniah. Zephaniah is near to the end of the Old Testament. In Zephaniah, we're looking at uh, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Zephaniah reading from chapter 1 verses 8 and 9 and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel did you see what the Lord said I will punish them the princes or the king's children sometimes says uh, you know the daughter of of a leader in the church the daughter of a woman coordinator and the, or the daughter of a of a coordinator in the church of a group coordinator or of an overseer in the church and the way they dress they say are you not a uh, so and so's daughter yes i am are you wearing something like this but daddy saw it and did not talk and daddy is the one overseeing the work in the whole region and daddy didn't talk why well, you wanting something like this? But mommy, mommy is a leader among the women, and she saw it and she didn't talk. King's children, I'll punish them. The Lord said, 
And then it says, and such, all such, as are clothed with strange apparel. In the same day, in verse 9, will I punish all those that live on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. The Lord is telling us that if we're Christians, we're called out people. We are called out of the abominations of the world, out of the affections of the world, out of the ambitions of the world, out of the associations of the world, out of the agitations of the world, out of the amusements of the world, out of the apparel appearance and adornment of the world. We come to point number two, cleansed from godliness to promote godliness. As we come to the Lord, he cleanses us, he purges us, he purifies us. And as he cleanses us, then all those things of the world are not in our lives anymore. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 again. Galatians chapter 1. I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Grace be unto you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God our Father. He cleanses us, he purges us, and when he does that, he takes the love of the world away from our hearts. He takes the love of the world away from our hearts. In First John chapter 2, First John chapter 2, reading from verse 14, he says in verse 14, I preaching unto you fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I preach unto you young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. You see, when you are cleansed, and when the grace of God energizes your life, you overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passes away. Don't you see how their passions are passing away? Don't you see how their way of dressing is passing away? It's the men that are trying to weave their hair like, like women. And another time, it was earring in one ear. Another time, it's earring in two ears. It used to be little earring that the men will put on, and now it's the bogus type they will put on. And you know, for the women, it used to be earring alone. Now it's in the nose. And some of them even have it on the leaves. And some of them have it on the toe. And some of them, is, the fingers are not enough for the, uh, for the jewelry now. It's now almost everywhere. The fashions of the world is not stable, it's passing away. But well, thank God for people of God. I said thank God for people of God. Because when we don't have any interest of who are we attracting, who are we impressing, are we impressing those uh, people who are going to hell? We only want to impress God, we want to please God. And therefore, all those uh, kind of appearances of the world, we're not going to have part in it. I said we'll not have part in it. And your parents have to be in control of your family. So see your boy, and he comes back home from school. And then he weaves his hair. You say, what is this? Don't come into this house. Go to the barber before you come in here and cut off that thing. And you see your girl, you see your daughter. Come in here with stranger. Where are you coming from? And where are you coming to? Are you coming to this house? This is where what I taught you. When I get back to you, you will not bring that to this house. The world will not set its foot on my house, in my home, in Jesus' name. You send them back to the barber, or you send them back to where they're coming from, and when they really want to live right, and act right, and appear right, and behave right, then they can come in. You will not pitch them, and you will not cover them up. And you will not say, well, you know, it's uh, my daughter. You know, the children of nowadays, the children nowadays, if you are going to live with me, you must get ready to go to heaven because I'm going to heaven. And anybody that was associated with me, my family, he must be ready to go to heaven. And you must have the same mind as well. The world passes away and the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Will abide forever. And uh, look at what the Lord is telling us in First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. 
9, First Timothy chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 9, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good words. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 3. In Isaiah chapter 3, Isaiah was very, very descriptive. And he told them uh, what they shouldn't have. And he told them why the anger of the Lord and the wrath of God and the judgment of God was upon them. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with straight forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with his cap the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their curls, and their round tires like the moon, the chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, and the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the, the tablets, and the earrings, and the rings, and the nose jewels and the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins and the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils and it shall it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink and instead of a gradually range instead of a well set here baldness and instead of stomach there will be a garden of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty you see the people today, you know, sometimes uh, you look at the face, and the face looks like a Jamaican. And then you look, at, uh, you look at the leg, the leg looks like a Sudanese. Why? Because, uh, you know, they are bleached uh, this place and bleached this place, and they forgot to bleach uh, the, the feet. And so it's like, you know, you have a chameleon in the head, you have a lizard, you know, in the leg, and things are very, very different. That's what God says. I'll give them honey instead of beauty, but the Lord has delivered us. I am delivered. I said I am delivered. And you keep your deliverance in Jesus' name. In Deuteronomy chapter 22, Deuteronomy chapter 22, I'm reading to you from verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so, whether they are coming from anywhere in the world or they are coming from Nigeria here. All that do so are abominations unto the Lord thy God. Do you want to be an abomination to the Lord? Then you must not be part of the world and you must not do those things that the people of the world are doing. In Romans chapter 12, I'm reading verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The Lord is telling us that we must not be conformed to the people of the world or to the pattern of the world or to the appearance of the world. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. In their festivities, be not conformed to this world. In their appearance, be not conformed to this world. In their marriage, and in their burial, in everything they do, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What leanness manifests itself in many ways and in many areas. And one of the areas is that I've been reading to you in what lay dressing, and what lay appearance, and what lay adornment. God's only purpose of clothing and dressing is to cover our nakedness. And you cover your nakedness appropriately. There are things that are not appropriate for women. There are things that are not appropriate for men. You cover your nakedness appropriately. There are things that are not appropriate for your teenage daughters. There are things that are not appropriate for your uh, teenage boys. You cover your nakedness, number one, appropriately. Number two, modestly. There should be modesty. But you know these people that have lost all sobriety and shame and modesty. And the way they appear, even some married women, 
and even their husbands will allow them to pose before a photographer and then they will show that picture to the world. Modesty has been thrown up into the air. It says you must close yourself in modesty. Modestly you, you close yourself. Number three, neatly. You'll be neat. You know, being like you are, uh, you are coming from the bush or that you have, you have been, you know, doing some work that you have not taken your bath for one whole week and the whole place is stinking. You will be neat. And then, number four, moderately. You will not spend all your income on, on dressing. And then completely you cover your nakedness so that the tempting part of your body will not be seen outside. You don't want to lure anybody into evil the way you dress. And then, number six, you dress decently. And then, number seven, economically. Economically. Transparent dresses, perforated dresses, attention seeking dresses are worldly. They are not for the children of God. We are not to be conformed to the world in dressing or in anything else. Worldly music will not be for you. Worldly entertainment will not be for you. Worldly festivities will not be for you. The worldly cares and the worldly societies, they are destructive to the Christian life, and therefore we will not have them in our lives in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, I'm reading to you from verse 18. See what worldly care does. See what worldly care actually produces in our lives. Mark chapter 4, verse 18. And these are they which are sown among sons, such as Hear the word and the cares of this life, the cares of this life, the cares of this life, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the loss of other things entering in, choke the world, and it becomes unfruitful. You see, if all these things are permitted in our lives, they will choke the word of God in our lives. Hearing, if all these cares of the world, and the appearance of the world, and the thinking of the world, and the direction of the world, if we permit them in our lives, in our families, in our church, it will choke the world. Look at verse 19 again. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the loss of all other things, entering in, if they were not there before, just entering in, they choke the world, and it becomes unfruitful. And these are they, which are sown on good ground, such as, Hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some thirty fold, some sixty fold, and some an hundred fold. What you are hearing this morning, will it bring any fruit in your life? How many fold will it bring? Will you accept the word of God and live by the word of God? And your wife live by the word of God? And your husband live by the word of God? And your children living by the word of God? The Lord will bless you. Let's come to point number three. Controlled by the Lord to propagate His glory. Controlled by the Lord to propagate His glory. You see, when you become a child of God, you belong to the Lord. And because you belong to the Lord, what now remains is that you live your life to the glory of the Lord and the Lord alone. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 19 and Verse 20. Here it tells us, Watch, know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That is, your body belongs to the Lord now. You will not act like the people that say, well, I don't want to carry my religion too far. I don't want to do anything about the body. I'll just dress the way I used to dress before. I'll just uh, drink what I used to drink before. After all, salvation righteousness is only in the heart. That's not the Bible. The Bible says that you are bought with a price. Therefore, you glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Because they belong to God. In Psalm 4, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 4, reading from verse 3. If you are a child of God, you are set apart for the honor and the glory of the Lord. It tells us, Psalm 4, verse 3. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him, stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart 
upon your own bed and be still. Don't be agitated. Don't fight against the word of God. Don't rebel against the word of God. Be still. Verse 5. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. To be righteous, it demands sacrifice. You cannot go your own way and please yourself and say whatever you want to say and dress the way you want to dress and say be righteous. Sacrifices of righteousness. If you're going to be righteous, it demands some sacrifice. Isaiah chapter 43, I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 43, reading from verse 7. It tells us, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. You are not for the glory of your tribe anymore. You are not for the glory of, uh, you know, your village people anymore. And you are not for your own glory anymore. You know, some people say, I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm handsome. And because of that, I want to show to the people how handsome I am. But you are not to show your own glory. And you are not to show your own honor. And you are not to demonstrate or uh, you are not to, you know, show your beauty to the people of the world. What does it say? Everyone that is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. For I, I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Look at verse 21. These people have I formed for myself. He has not made you for yourself. He has not redeemed you for yourself. It says, these people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. It tells us in Romans chapter 14, verse 8. Romans chapter 14, we're reading from verse 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live and Therefore, or die, we are the Lord's, we belong to the Lord. And it's only the beauty of holiness that will be important to us now. We're reading from Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, from verse 5. Now, the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded. That is, for there to be no difference between you and I. That what I preach over here, you receive over there. And we accept the word together. The Lord grant you that you be like-minded one to another according to Christ Jesus. Then he says that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God. That is, there's no difference. What the pastor is preaching, the people are receiving. And then with one mind and with one mouth, we're glorifying God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is telling us then, we have something to do. And we have the Lord to honor. And we have our souls, our spirits to protect from the things of the world. We will not allow the world to infiltrate into our hearts. Or to infiltrate into our family. Or to infiltrate into our church. This church will be kept away from the world in Jesus' name. In Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 again. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. The latest passion, is that from above? The jewelry and the gold, is that from above? The cosmetics and the painting, is that from above? Are you setting your attention on that? If ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, for ye are dead. We are dead to all those things. Are we attracted by them again? Are we interested in them again? We are dead to them, for ye are dead, and your life is seed with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Thank God the Lord has done it in our hearts. Now we're waiting for the coming of the Lord. And when he will come, the world will not pull us down. Worldliness will not get us away from the Lord. We'll remain with the Lord until he comes. In, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. We're living in an evil world. 
in a world of darkness, in a world of sin, in a world of pollution, but we are here to be different and we are to shine forth the light of the glorious gospel and the life we live should show what we have been learning from the word of God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When people see you, when people relate with you, will they be glorifying the world or glorifying God? Will they be glorifying you or honoring the Lord? I want people to honor the Lord when they see me. And you want the, Lord, the people to honor the Lord when they see you. If that's your goal, then let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works, your different life, your gracious life, your holy life, your heaven-mindedness. And then they will glorify our Father who is in heaven. We're going to spend some time in prayer. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord today. And say, Lord, I have heard and I'm going to obey. Lord, you have taught me today and I accept everything that you have taught me. Number one, called out of the world. Number two, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Number three, controlled by the Spirit of God. You tell the Lord, look back at home, look back home in your wardrobe. Look back home in your family. Look back home, dear sister, dear brother, and young people. Look back home. Are you acting like the world? Are you behaving like the world? Or are you yielding yourself to the Lord? Commit yourself to the Lord. You have things to repent of, repent. You have things to set right, rectify in your life, rectify them, set them right. You have things to restore, make your restitution. You have heard the word of God today. Be heavenly minded. Don't allow the pressure of the world or the persecution of the world or the practice of the world to crush you and bury you in the dirty water of the world. The world is like a well with dirty water. And the Lord Jesus died for us. He shed his blood for us so that he can rescue us and deliver us and pull us out of the present evil world. Come out from that evil in the world and say, Lord, here am I. I give myself unto you. Do you remember your character when you first came to know the Lord? Your dressing when you first came to know the Lord. Your comportment when you first came to know the Lord. Why have you changed? The word of God has not changed. Why are you trying to please the world now instead of pleasing God? The word of God has not changed. The standard has not changed. If anybody changed, he has been influenced by the world. The perforated dresses you will not wear before. Why are you wearing them today? And the transparent dresses will not wear before. Why are you wearing them today? And the things will not allow before. Why are you allowing them today? Why don't you return to Bethel and return to the place you knew the Lord and your commitment of those days and your yieldedness of those days and your submission of those days and your obedience of those days, you bring the obedience back. The grace of God is still available. The grace of God is still available. The grace of God is still available. And that grace is able to make us what we ought to be. We should never feel we are above the teaching of the Word of God. We should never feel that now we become so high, so knowledgeable, and we become so rich and so wealthy. That now the word of God does not make any sense, any meaning in our lives anymore. You are in the marriage committee. 
what you will not allow. In the other sisters that are coming, the married country, they want to get married. You are now for your daughter. When your daughter is going to get married, what you will not allow in the men, the young men who are coming to the marriage committee, you are in the marriage committee yourself. Do you allow it on your son? When your son is going to get married, isn't that double standard? Is that of God? Keep the standard for the members of the church and for members of your whole family. Keep the standard, the word of God. Teach your children, teach your daughters, teach your sons, teach your wife. And plead with your husband that we follow the standard together. Whosoever will be a friend of the world will be the enemy of God. Whosoever, whosoever, even Solomon, whosoever, or Samson, whosoever, no matter how high, how popular, how rich, how exalted, how high, whosoever will be a friend of the world will be an enemy of God. Come out of the world. Examine yourself. The associations you belong to today. Examine yourself. The ambition you entertain in your mind. Examine yourself. The agitations you have gotten into. You are going to get anything from your place of work? Agitation. You are going to get anything from your husband? Agitation. You are going to get anything from your wife? Agitation. You are going to get anything from your parents? Agitation. You are going to get anything from the church? Agitation. Rebellious attitude. Unruly attitude. Aggressive attitude. Anything you want to have? Agitation. Repent of it. It's not of God. It used to be that only children will practice agitation. Now politicians practice agitation. Rich people now practice agitation. Religious people now practice agitation. It used to be that there's a mixed multitude that are not really sure of their new experience, one leg inside, one leg outside. It used to be that they were the only people that will murmur and get agitated. But now the leaders like Korah, and Abiram, they also get into agitation. Repent of it. Repent of it. Agitation is not of God. Routing is not of God. Breaking down the system is not of God. And disobedience is not of God. Repent of the agitation and say, Lord, I surrender myself to you. Can't you pray for five minutes? Can't you yield yourself to the Lord? Can't you take all those points in the message and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Cleanse with the blood of the Lamb. Cleanse with the blood of the Lamb. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we are fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you tonight. Cleanse you today. Cleanse you at this time. Cleanse you from all sin. All those abominations of the world. All those abominations of the world. Women putting on what belongs to men. Men putting on what belongs to women. All those abominations and the occultism and the necromancy. And everything that's an abomination to the Lord, let the Lord cleanse you. He can do it. He can do it. He'll cleanse with the washing of water by the word and with the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the word of God have a cleansing, purifying, purging effect in your life. As a Christian woman, appear like a Christian woman. Dress like a Christian woman. Talk like a Christian woman. Be submissive as a Christian woman. Ministry. Be a son in the ministry. Be teachable. Be submissive. Be yielded to the word of God. Lord, not my way, but your way. Not my will, but your will. And let those things of the world be totally taken away from your life.
purged, purified, following after the principles of Scripture, be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be renewed, renewed in your mind, renewed in your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, holy, perfect will of God. Let the word of God have a definite effect on your life, a definite impact in your life, a definite influence in your life. You will not be as a word before if the word of God is influencing you. There will be an improvement. There will be a change. In your methods, there will be a change. In your behavior, there will be a change. In your conduct, there will be a change. Let there be a change. And say, Lord, today, I surrender completely, completely unto you. Do in me what you want to do and accomplish. Help me, Lord, not to stick to my own way, but now to take the way of the Lord alone for the rest of my life.